Welcome to another Creature Feature. Today I'm being joined by Aaron, and we are going to be doing a little bit different of a segment. We're going to switch it up a little bit here. We're going to be featuring a new segment that I, I don't know if ultimately it'll break away from Creature Feature or if it just comfortably fits within the, the framework of Creature Feature. But this is going to be called Down to the Crossroads. And in the hopefully months to come of doing this, we will work out uh, an intro um, and... Uh, maybe solidify the format a little bit but essentially what I've done is been really impressed with Aaron's musical tastes and before I introduce her to you all uh, just giving you a little bit of background here uh, I asked her to come on and share that with you some of uh, the music she finds influential some of the music she finds exciting so Aaron thank you so much for joining me how are you tonight I'm great thanks for having me no, it's truly a pleasure on my part. Uh, first of all, let's do a little bit of an intro here for the audience. Um, what is the, uh, what's this passion you have for, for, I don't know, and I wouldn't even call it all obscure music, but certainly some uh, more hidden gems of uh, uh -huh. music. Well, I just love music so much that, you know, you can only listen to so much mainstream music before you start finding more music. I mean, I'm always, I'm the kind of person to just, you know, dig a little deeper than I think most people do. And, you know, I started working at a record store at a pretty young age, and that's the best way to do it. I mean, if you can get a job at a record store, I don't know if they're even going to have record stores for much longer, but <laughs> when I was 19, they were still going pretty strong, I guess. And uh, I was really fortunate to, to fall in with a good crowd there and, you know, listen to music all the time. And you're just bound to come across crazy stuff and you know, everybody's got their own taste, and everybody's going to introduce you to something new, and it's just, you know, that's where it started, and it just never stopped. That's great. Thanks. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a, a little bit here before we dive into some of the tunes? Uh, what's this the format that you see this uh, segment, Down to the Crossroads, falling into? Well, I think I'd like to play a few songs, you know, with a loose theme to them. Maybe three songs probably is a good limit i don't take up your whole show with yeah. my music and um you know give them a loose theme and i'll you know introduce them and tie them all together and then we'll play them and we'll oh, yeah. talk about them <laughs> <laughs> i love it okay and uh maybe just as an aside mm -hmm. you uh you follow the left hand path what, what started you down that road uh probably a pretty typical story you know i've always i probably you know found the satanic bible probably when i was 15 or 16, and, you know, it was just a, a curious thing that, you know, was interesting. I've always sort of been, like I said, trying to dig a little deeper. Um, I wasn't really raised religious, so I had, a, you know, I had a pretty open mind from a young age. And finally, I was, I guess I was around 19, 18 or 19, and I met a um, Church of Satan member, and, you know, he just opened up the world to me. <laughs> wow. You know, and I've just, it's been a, you know, interest of mine since then nice yeah and actually that's that's how uh, you and i have met through a mutual that's friend right. mm -hmm. um, that's the uh, very same friend indeed. oh very nice <laughs> yep all right um okay well hey I, i'm really excited to hear what you have for us this week uh, please all right well i thought at least for the first time i would try to focus pretty heavily on this whole um selling your soul to the devil notion that people talk about um in all kinds of music but i think it's, I think it's taken hold in blues music, especially because blues musicians actually sort of embraced the idea. And they weren't, you know, you call rock and roll the devil's music, but no, they never really embraced it the way that these blues musicians did. And um, the first song I wanted to talk about was, it's called Devil in the Lion's Den. And I think, you know, there's a, a notion that you and probably a lot of your listeners can relate to is that a lot, in a lot of these blues songs, the devil is just a metaphor, you know. Mm. They're not talking about the the red, you know, horny devil that that the Christians usually talk about. You know, it's just a metaphor. You know, sometimes it's a mean-hearted woman or a whip-cracking boss or just the evils of the world. But um, so in this first song, the devil in the lion's den, this is the, this guy's name, Sam Collins, and I don't think he's very well known. Um, you know, there's a lot of big blues musicians that everybody knows, but not many people have heard of this guy, and they call him Crying Sam Collins because of the way he sings, and he's he's one of those, you know, a lot of these blues musicians have uh, a legend attached to him. This guy just had 
a bunch of different names you used to perform under, like Jelly Roll Hunter and <laughs> Big Boy Woods and Salty Dog Sam. So this nice. guy, he, yeah, he was born in 1887 in Louisiana, and um, he's got this crazy high falsetto singing. And in in this song, uh, he's sort of the devil. You know, he plays the role of the devil. So uh, this is uh, Crying Sam Collins and his git fiddle. Nice. My mama did like the Bible can't be And then nice, it's a nice touch. <laughs> and it's actually the best recording I can find. All the pops and kisses like a record player. Yeah. He's got a great, um, you know, slide guitar technique. So uh, I'm sitting here with some uh, black and rum, and just like <laughs> just sitting in ice, and uh, I'm sort of just transporting myself back in time with the sun. Isn't it perfect? Yeah. This song is great. It's full of. Um, like braggadocio, he's just talking about how, you know, he, he's just, you know, he's the greatest guy in the world. He's, he's just hanging out in the lion's den. Who's gonna be? <laughs> There's a woman in the story that's begging him to stay, and he says, "No, nah, lady, I gotta go. I got rambling." Let me tell you, mama, what you said last night. There's so much more emotion in music like this, in my opinion, than anything that's on the radio nowadays. I, mean, I can agree. It's just one guy, uh, his guitar, you know, sometimes you're going to have someone in backup, but it's, it's really intimate, it's really personal, and it's just, just it's outpouring wrong. of emotion. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I was talking about the bragging earlier, you know, a, a correlation could be made with, like, rap music of today, where, you know, it's all about, like, all the, you know, women you can have sex with, and all the money you have, and all the cars you have, but it's a different sort of bragging, you know, it's just like, I'm a devil in a lion's den, you know, it's just great, it's such a powerful idea in that song. So do you think uh, the lion's den is, is uh, a connection to some... Uh... Like, like religious thing, or, or is it just to put him in a, a difficult position or something? Yeah, you know, it, it, that's open to interpretation. I think he must have had that in mind. I mean, that whole idea of like um, the circus Maximus, you know, and the Christ, you know, the being fed to the lions, and he just he's just untouchable in this, you know, arena. Or you know, or it could just be, you know, the, the, this relationship with this woman is a lion's den, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It could be anything, but I think, yeah, that's you know, that's what's great about it. Yeah, I think I like the latter a little bit better. Where it's, yeah, <laughs> his wife is the line. Probably so. <laughs> so that's that one. What do you think? I love it. I I, yeah. I think it's great. I I I like the 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 voice on it is great. One thing that I I. I don't know. In a lot of uh, blues that I hear nowadays, that I'm I'm sort of turned off to, mm -hmm. and maybe just desensitized to, is is when they. They try to, you know, uh, call back to some earlier he blues heroes, and they try to keep it all deep and down, and you know, they, uh -huh. <laughs> they're like trying to evoke uh, like a parody of blues rather than just actually just being themselves in the blues. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard to recreate now. I don't listen to a lot of new blues music just because it's turned into something completely different, you know. And I don't want to, um, you know, start placing blame on that. But I think when you started like 
with the wailing, you know, electric guitars. That's kind of when I stopped needing the blues at that mm -hmm. point. When it's sort of just posturing and silly, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in that that much. <laughs> yeah, there's this huge resurgence, um, at least where I lived in the area um, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. where it was just this uh, sort of Chicago blues, B.B. Yeah. King, you know, revival of yeah. blues. And I, I think bands like uh, Dave Matthews, who I think is wildly overrated. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it is just uh, sort of, I don't know, that the, that audience, Dave Matthews' audience, sort of picked up the blues and, and sort of sort, started running with it. And in my opinion, really shit on, yeah. <laughs> on what it <laughs> meant. into the ground. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of blues music, especially, yeah, in the 90s and stuff, it was just bar, you know, it was sort of relegated to, to bar music, where it was just white dudes playing bad harmonica, playing these same, you know, three chords, and, you know, it, it, the, just all the soul was sort of taken out of it, and it's just pe basically cover bands of, you know, music that maybe was good. But, you know, that's one of the things about the blues that is kind of cool, is that it was sort of, the Im you could see the influences of just like artists that were just two or three years apart you know you would see like um you know lightning hopkins even was a little later in the blues but you could see him doing all the old songs and just putting his special twist on them you know it's really kind of cool but yeah that's the chicago blue stuff i'm not that interested in <laughs> yeah well um i'm looking at the little uh track list here and i'm i'm really excited for this next one oh, yeah? uh, this is actually has a connection with uh darren deicide and i where um, he, uh, he and I decided to start collaborating on a version of this song. Oh, yeah. Um, the Skip James, uh, Devil Got My Woman. Yeah. So uh, you want to take that one away? Cool. Well, this, yeah, Skip James, he's another sort of Delta, you know, pre-war blues. I'm not going to stray too far from that right now. So, uh, but, you know, Skip James, he's known for that sort of plaintive, wailing voice that he's got in this, you know, he's got a great intricate finger picking style and so yeah and this one the devil is also sort of less of a metaphor and it's it's kind of uh literal because it's you know about his woman is just sort of this you know I mean, you know the woman is a little bit of a devil but she's definitely been turned <laughs> to the dark you know he's just you know it's another one of those you know bitches <laughs> so here we go i'll just play this yeah uh devil got my woman by skip james As an aside during the intro, um, Darren oh, Deicide's on tour right now right doing now. his version of this live. Oh, yeah? Can you hear that all right? Yeah, yeah. I, I love yeah. this intro. Yeah, it's that finger picking's great. And he just takes it with that voice. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> So yeah, he opens up, says, I'd rather be the devil to be that woman, man. Just like, <laughs> this woman's driving me crazy. <laughs> but I think that this, this song is sort of, just has a sort of irony that not a lot of blues songs have. Because, you know, he talks about, he took this woman away from his best friend. And that's the whole deal, is he stole this woman from his best friend. And then his best friend stole her back. And he's like, well, you can have her, man. I lived last night. I lived last so, uh, just 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 listening to this, it, it really takes you back. And I have to call back. I mentioned it briefly in the, the first track you played here, uh, "Devil Lies Down." But music like this, I mean, 
speaks it really has the capacity of taking you back and, and really I mean if you ever read the Satanic Scriptures um, Peter H. Gilmore has a really great article on time travel and, and music like this I mean, it's got to be your cup of tea, but it can really yeah, yeah. transport you. In fact, do the damn heat wave in my house right now. It's, <laughs> I feel like yeah. it is taking me back. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'm sweating. I just pulled my hair up. It's hot. Yeah, it takes you. It feels like a thing. Mississippi Delta. <laughs> yeah, I was actually... Um, I mean, right now, we're, we're doing this via Skype, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at a still photo of you. So I, I was going to open up my video, but there's no way, because it's so hot in here. I have to have, like, I, like take my shirt off and just dripping with sweat, all gross and funky. It's a good yeah. thing there's no smell associated with Skype. <laughs> be a bad thing. Well, yeah, I, I'm telling you, we uh, we had some powerful storms, and it's... Our power was out for a while, and it was we were it was like a swamp in here. But <laughs> we're much better now. So that was Skip James. Oh yeah. I don't know what else to say about the man, but yeah, he. There's no that song particularly takes you somewhere else. You know, you can just I just start rocking, and <laughs> I mean, I just <laughs> just forget about everything but that voice and that guitar picking. Absolutely. Oh. All right. Well, so. Finally, this is the last song I'm going to play for you. Right. This this is Robert Johnson, and I think pretty much everybody who even has a casual uh, relationship with the blues knows who Robert Johnson is. He's mm -hmm. the king of the Delta blues. And um, well, what to say about this? This is I'm going to play uh, "Me and the Devil Blues." And Robert Johnson's a fascinating guy. You know, he's he's you know the legend. When it comes to going down to the crossroads and selling your soul to the devil so that you have this amazing voice and guitar ability. And he definitely just, he's got these, have you ever seen that really iconic picture of him where he's got the cigarette coming out and his hands on the guitar? And like, our crumb did an illustration of it. It's amazing. If you ever get a look at it, just take a look at this guy's fingers on the fretboard of his guitar yeah. and it's like a he's got these spider like fingers that you can just imagine you know just spanning the fretboard like they're possessed you know and so yeah he he definitely and this you know he definitely played played up that that legend of you know selling his soul and you know he was dead by the age of 27 uh you know poisoned by a jealous lover and, uh, you know, his career, really brief, and he had only, he only had two recording sessions in his whole life, but, I mean, he, if you say Robert Johnson, just about everybody's gonna know who you're talking about, so that, it speaks to this man's sort of, you know, the possession that he had over his own story, and his, his, you know, you're just, everybody knows him, and knows the, the legend behind him, most yeah. people, I imagine, but yeah, so this is, you know, this is sort of his ode to that, time <laughs> that legend of his so I'm gonna go ahead and play this there we go got a little silence at the beginning but it's playing <laughs> Brings a fucking smile. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> well, Robert Johnson has a special place in my heart because, like I said, I, 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 don't, I don't remember if I did say this or not, but when I was 13, I found my father's Robert Johnson box set that he had. You know, two discs, you know, complete discography. And that, and my father's Billy Holiday box set. I believe All I listened to when I was 13. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't even imagine what about this music at that time as a 13 year old gr girl living in New Hampshire. Like, what could I possibly have gotten from this music at that time? I don't know what it was, but it, whatever it was, it never let go. And I've been listening to Robert Johnson, you know, for what is that, 20 something years. And it never. The joy that I get from this never goes away. And, I'm going to be my <laughs> and there are plenty of other blues, you know, Until musicians out there that are just as good, if not better, than Robert Johnson. But obviously, you know, something about him grabs people's you don't attention. Be and definitely grabbed mine. Let you dog me down. Mm -hmm. 
I love those little asides he's got too. Yeah. Yeah. What's amazing about this? I mean, he's, he's young. I mean, he's really fucking young, and so he hasn't. Maybe it's a symptom of our time in that we be that old stay, evil spirit. I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. Um, so we stay a little bit infantile in our growth, maybe more than than they did back then. Uh, we're just coddled a lot more, I think. But, but you know, there's this this, this essence of, of pain that hey, comes through, or, or uh, I don't know, uh, yearning. You for made them my that I don't think a modern day twenty year old is gonna have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Even you know, even a young black man in Mississippi, there's no way he relates to this any more than I do. You know, like times are just different. And, I mean, currently, you know. So yeah, I mean, 27 when he died, so he did all of this in his you know 20s, which I can't, I can't even imagine. But yeah, yeah when he does that sort of howl, like it's just sound, you know, it's just like a cry of an animal. <sighs> Uh, so there you go. That's my stuff. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Well, well, thank you so much. That that was a lot well, of fun. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm really excited to see what else you got to bring to the table. Um, everyone, that was uh, Aaron with Down to the Crossroads. Uh, look uh, forward to uh, again yep. sometime. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll come out with uh, you know uh, every first or first and third week of the month or something like that, and, and have that end up working maybe. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Sure. Yeah, and, and yeah. there's definitely going to be some sound issues. Like right now, I can I can hear myself through your speakers, so we'll have to work out little things like that. Thank you for joining me, Aaron. Thanks, Adam. Hail Satan. Hail Satan.